Hello, I'm Oliver and this is Deep Cuts, a channel dedicated to music for lovers of music. Okay, so I thought I'd do another discussion video today. Uh, and yes, that is little Oliver in the thumbnail there, sporting some great 90s gear. Cheers for that, mum. Which introduces today's topic rather nicely, I think. How do memories alter and inform your relationship with music? If you have a strong relationship with music, it can often stem from childhood. Things like mums and dads playing records around the house, your older brother or sister's CD collection, influence from friends at school, or maybe even teachers. If you think about it, it's quite beautiful the way in which memory and nostalgia filter down through music. That music might get passed on to somebody else and their own personal autobiographical history, their own memory, their own nostalgia will create something completely different um, in relation to that piece of music than to the other person. And in a way that reveals the deeply intense personal relationship many of us have with music. Case in point, my parents used to listen to the band Squeeze a lot when they were first married. And as a kid, I can remember listening to those tracks and hearing them sing along to it. Um, you know, so I can't listen to those tracks again now without being immediately transported back to my time as a child. That music is and always will be intrinsically connected to my parents and to a specific time. Whereas I'm sure my parents' relationship with the music is based very heavily around their early relationship and the time they got married. So where does this connection come from, I hear you ask? I don't hear you ask, but I'll imagine you're asking me. I'm gonna go down two routes with this. First, the more scientific route, I'm already out of my depth. <laughs> and then a slightly more poetic abstraction as well. If you ever fancy a little bit of light reading, you should check out Dr. Petra Janata's study titled The Neural Architecture of Music Evoked Autobiographical Memories. No, honestly, it's a page turner. In this study, Janata attempts to uncover whether or not the medial prefrontal cortex, which is this bit on this diagram I'm gonna put up for you, acts as a sort of hub where it sorts and attaches personal autobiographical memory with specific features of music, be that harmony, rhythm, all that good stuff we here in the Deep Cuts community seem to like so much. What's really difficult for the study in question, and in fact reveals how deeply personal our individual relationships with music are, is that there were so many different sets of variables in this study that it was difficult to produce a set of conclusive results. Janata didn't want the test subjects to bring their own list of memory evoking songs, because that will probably displace or change the original memory that they're trying to tap into here. But also on the flip side, how are you able to produce a broad enough stimulus selection that's going to apply to to all of the different test subjects you're using because you know nostalgia and memory works for different people in different kinds of music. You can't just necessarily use the top 40 when the subject was between the age of nine and 16 and hopefully there'll be something there because there might be but, other, but otherwise the subject might have listened to all types of different music when they were younger and therefore their own memory um, and feelings are evoked from different styles of music. So it's a little bit problematic anyway. Anyway, without getting into too much analytical detail, the results concluded that not only that this area shows a generalized increase to the degree of familiarity and autobiographical salience, but also that this region follows the structural aspects of the music. In other words, this region exhibits the properties of a mechanism that associates structural aspects of a retrieval cue with episodic memories. So biologically, this is what our brain does when we listen to a piece of music that evokes memory or feeling. It's connecting the autobiographical memory with the patterns of harmony and the building blocks that construct that piece of music. Now, to go further with this idea of memory and music, the test subjects in this study were asked to recall specific autobiographical memories from childhood. So let's say, I don't know, a day out with your family or going to school and hearing a specific song on the radio. I know, very boring examples, but you catch my drift. But that isn't the only type of memory that informs your relationship with music, I don't think. It's true that often if you listen to a piece of music, you might be transported back to a very specific situation or a moment, but what about that hazy, distant feel you often get when you listen to a piece of music? Not a very specific, constructed situation, but like the evocation of a feeling. This isn't going off topic, so bear with me, but there's this Brian Friel play called Dancing at Lunasa, which is about these five Irish sisters who live a pretty crappy life, bad harvests, all that sort of stuff happens within the play. Um, and, but what keeps them going are their memories of their family connected and tied to traditional Irish folk music and dance. It's pretty depressing, and I don't know if I'd necessarily recommend you going out and reading it, and maybe catch it if it's on at your local playhouse or theater, but it contains a beautiful passage, very relevant to the topic we're talking about today. But there is one memory of that Lunasa time that visits me most often. And what fascinates me about that memory is that it owes nothing to fact. In that memory, atmosphere is more real than incident, and everything is simultaneously actual and illusory. 
It drifts in from somewhere far away, a mirage of sound, a dream music that is both heard and imagined. That seems to be both itself and its own echo. Here, Friel is talking about that feeling you can get from music that might send a shiver down your spine, that it transports you to this time, but it's kind of out of time, that place, because it's not constructed, it's not a constructed memory. If I hear a track from Speakerbox or Stanconia, for example, you know, the two Outcast records, I don't immediately think, oh yeah, I remember listening to this, uh, and I was in this place at this time, and it reminds me of this specific situation. No, what I get is I get this hazy, distant wash of feeling that reminds me of being a naive child who hasn't experienced experience much of the world yet. It's a feeling you can't grab onto or necessarily explain in any coherent way, which is probably why I pulled an obscure Irish play out of my ass to try and illustrate. This, I think, is the core way in which memory informs our connection with music. It's not a specific, oh, I remember this particular time because of this specific piece of music, but it's more complexly linked to emotions and experience, fragments of opinion, intensity, sadness. It's, it's fragmentary and illusory like Brian Friel was talking about and it creates, it occupies a different space in our head, not the specific moments and specific constructed things we've experienced, but a whole host of feelings and emotions and ideas that we may have felt in previous times. It all brings it all together into this space that's completely unique when you're listening to that piece of music. But I want to know a couple of things from you guys because after all this is a discussion video. If you think back into your own autobiographical memories, how does music fit into that? Do specific tracks remind you of specific situations? People maybe? Do you find the majority of your memories evoked through music are, as I'm trying to suggest more abstract or do you find them more specific? How do, how do those formulate in your head as you think about that? Do you listen to new tracks and ever get an unexplainably nostalgic feeling despite having never heard the song before? I'm really excited to get stuck into chatting about this with you guys. It's a very fascinating topic and we always get some really healthy debate and discussion going in the comments section. So make sure you answer some of the questions I asked at the end of this video or just put down whatever your thoughts are about this topic and we'll get some really good debate going. Thanks a lot and I'll see you soon.